coming up on this episode. Now remember what I taught you about women. Oh, yeah, see about the memory, Pappy. Let's see. A woman is one of them soft, fun things, and she got long, silky hair, and she closes her mouth when she chews tobacco, and she wears both her shoes on her day off. And that's the only difference between a man and a woman. Yeah, nuggies. Thanks for stopping by. I did not know that. Please like and subscribe. Can I have just a little bit of time to think about it? Do it now. When I was a kid, for some reason, I got a kick out of it when television programs I watched did crossover shows, when worlds collided, when the Green Hornet popped in on Batman or Dennis the Menace showed up on Donna Reed's doorstep. But probably the king of the crossovers was the Beverly Hillbillies. They did multiple episodes with characters from Petticoat Junction and Green Acres. During that era, CBS had a number of shows like those on the air. They called them rural shows, and most of them were in the top ten ratings, including The Andy Griffith Show. While that program didn't do any real crossover shows that I recall, unless you count the pilot episode Griffith did on The Danny Thomas Show, they did do kind of a crossover show after The Andy Griffith Show left the air and the next season was the start of Mayberry RFD. Andy showed up to kickstart the new series by marrying Helen Crump. Even Barney showed up for one lone appearance. The character of Andy Taylor appeared in five episodes of that spin-off series. In one of my videos from a couple years back, I mentioned to someone in the comments section that I thought that a great crossover would have been either having the Darlings or Ernest T. Bass from the Andy Griffith Show visit the Beverly Hillbillies or have the Clampett clan visit Mayberry and hook up with Ernest T or the Darling family. Now that would have been quite the hootenanny and that surely would have kept Andy and Barney busy. I have to admit I always enjoyed actor Howard Morris and his portrayal of the deranged Ernest T Bass. So imagine my surprise when sometime later I stumbled on a photo of Jed Clampett actually with Ernest T. Bass. I guess I wasn't the only one who thought the crossover would have been fun. Fortunately, I was able to find video footage of this event on YouTube. So when and where did this meeting take place? Which episode of the Beverly Hillbillies or the Andy Griffith show did this happen? The surprising answer is neither show. The meeting of the two characters actually took place on the Danny Kay show in February of 1964. Kay's program was a variety show where the multi-talented Kay sang, danced, and performed comedy skits with his guests. It was a bit like the Carol Burnett show. In fact, Harvey Korman, best known as a performer on that show, was also a regular on Danny Kay's program and in fact took part in the Buddy Epson Howard Morris skit. But first I have to give a bit of a caveat to all of this. I don't know why they did it, but Epson first appears in this skit as Jed Clampett. Oh, howdy, uh, I'm Jed Clampett from Beverly Hills. But for some reason, the writers decided that Jed will be telling a tale about his identical twin brother, who is also named Jed. Well, let him explain it. I don't know how many of you know this, but I got an identical twin brother. That's a fact, and since we was identical twins, our pappy named us both Jed, naturally. But every time we called Jed, uh, we both come running. Well, we couldn't have two Jed Clampets, so my pappy decided to change my brother's name to Jed Clump. And since I look so much like my twin brother, I'll play the part of him. So, we soon learn that Jed Clump has two sons. You'll notice immediately that his first son, Spud, looks and speaks exactly like Ernest T. Bass. And just like Ernest T., poor Spud is looking for a bride. Thanks, son. Now I remember what I taught you about women. Oh, yeah, see about the memory, Pappy. Let's see. A woman is one of them soft, fun things, and she got long, silky hair, and she closes her mouth when she chews tobacco, and she wears both her shoes on her day off. And that's the only difference between a man and a woman. The other son is named Judd, and he's played by Danny Kay. It all feels a bit too convoluted. Wouldn't it have been simpler just to make Ernest T. Bass and Judd 
Jed Clampett's nephews? Anyway, Judd is also looking for a woman and he catches a bear instead. While watching this, it occurred to me that trying to get hitched was always the running theme whenever Hollywood portrayed hillbillies. Ernest T. was always looking for a woman to be his bride on The Andy Griffith Show. Charlene Darling was always looking for a husband and went after Andy, and her pappy Briscoe even tried to make Aunt B. his wife. Jethro was always looking for a girl to marry, preferably a movie star, and it seemed the only one he didn't want to marry was Jane Hathaway. And Granny was always looking to marry Ellie Mayoff when Ellie wasn't involved with Dash Riprock. And even Granny herself would always hear wedding bells whenever she ran into Sam Drucker from Petticoat Junction. Uh, ain't Granny going to get her nose out of the joints with you taking over the kitchen like this? Oh, no, sir. It's on account of Granny getting married to Sam Drucker that I'm a doing it. She told you that, did she? Yes, sir. Says Mr. Drucker's coming to claim his prize. <laughs> well, you know, Granny, she's likely to get carried away. Yes, sir. He's going to carry her clean back to Hooterville. Evidently, hillbillies, aside from making moonshine, just don't have anything else to do in life but to chase the opposite sex and drag them to the altar. Okay, back to the episode. Like I mentioned, while Judd didn't find a woman, he did find a bear. This leads to songs, dancing, and a lot of slapstick humor. Danny Kay and Howard Morris clearly were enjoying themselves while playing brothers and seemed to be trying to outdo each other in dancing, singing, and they had a bit of a laughing contest that would have made Jim Carrey proud. Poor Buddy Epson kind of gets upstaged by the two as they try to top each other. <laughs> Near the end of the skit, Harvey Corman pops in as someone wanting to find authentic folk music. It has a surprise ending, which I won't spoil. I'll post a link to the full episode below. Watching this clip really made me miss the days of variety shows and actors who were so multi-talented. Was it ridiculous? Yes. Was it silly and corny? Yes. But what's wrong with that? I think we could all use some of this kind of humor that the whole family used to be able to enjoy. I do think that a true Beverly Hillbillies crossover with Mayberry's Hillbillies would have been a fun show. Or how about Ernest T. Bass attempting to court the girls from Petticoat Junction. I think Kate would have had a nervous breakdown. I am thinking of the biggest thing I can lay my hands on to break over his head. I hope you enjoyed this little walk down memory lane to remember some of those great old shows from the past. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't look like no tape looks more like a worm to me. You make me ever it's a tape worm. <laughs> <laughs> Better, 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 better